Hi, let us understand how to use the basic docker commands and uh, get a feel on how a docker image will be created. Before that, let's understand the complete life cycle on how the image will be built and how it will be used within the continuous integration and continuous delivery. Assume this is a client and we will be having the docker host where the docker daemon will be running and here we will have the docker daemon running from the client we can issue commands like docker build pull run push all such commands we can use. To work with this, we need a file called a docker file. It's nothing bad. It's going to have a set of instruction on what is the base image, what are layers to be added. Layers are nothing but a different a set of configurations on how that particular image should be configured. With the image, we will be building something called with this docker file, we will be building something called an image. Image is nothing but a template. With the image, we can create a number of containers. This image needs to be stored somewhere. That's where registry comes into picture. So within registry, we can store a number of images. Once the image is ready, I can create a container from the image available within the registry or the one that I created locally. So once the image is created using the docker file, we can test that particular image whether that is built as per our requirement by creating a container. So once the container is created, that could be either from the image that I built locally or image available within the registry. So this is nothing but a container. Using an image, we can create n number of containers. To manage these containers or to do the orchestration, that's where the Kubernetes and uh, Docker Spam Compose, all that comes into picture. Now, once we finalize this particular container is working as per this, but as per our expectations, we will be storing this particular Docker file. So that's the base file. We will be storing it within the GitHub repository. It could be a private git or a public git. Once this particular docker file is stored, I can track the changes. Any change happening on this particular docker file that will be sensed and automatically the build will be triggered. The image will be created. Once the image is created, the registry will be updated. And we can have a continuous delivery mechanism that's going to pick this particular image and update the container either in Kubernetes or in the Docker host. Till that particular image getting registered in the registry, that's where the continuous integration comes into picture. Before that, we will do all the automated testing. Everything will be done so that any change to the code automatically it will be integrated the unit testing integration testing everything will be done and it will be stored within the registry once the registry is going out of sync with the server that is mapped that's where the continuous delivery comes into picture continuous delivery based on the rules setup it's going to pick the image create the container and sync it with the host where the docker daemon is running or within the kubernetes cluster to make the continuous integration and continuous delivery work seamlessly this docker image going to 
help a lot we do have other container we do have other containerization mechanisms like rocket podman container d and lot more we can use those container we can use those alternatives along with docker with this particular introduction let's uh, create few docker images add it to the registry and uh, check how that particular process works <laughs>